Welcome in to Truth Daily Diamond for Saturday, September 21st, 2024. We are talking college football week three. Truth Daily Diamond edition of CFB. The recap of last Saturday, three and two plus 0.8 units. Hopefully another profitable Saturday coming your way as we got four games we're breaking down. Let me know in the comments below what your college football picks are. MLB, NFL, all is welcome in the comments below. Also, what you want to hear coming up on the uh, weekend sessions. If you still want MLB coming at you on Saturdays, I am all ears. Let me know in the comments below. Starting off, 4 o'clock Eastern, Toledo and Western Kentucky. The Rockets, minus two and a hook as the road favorite. Total of 60 in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Guys, I like this one because a fundamental change here on the Western Kentucky side. Their original starting quarterback, TJ Finley, a guy that went to LSU, Auburn, comes here to Western Kentucky. He went out with an injury. I just wasn't a, a big fan of him. I, I didn't think he ran the offense all that well. And sure enough, the backup comes in, Caden Veltkamp, and goes 27 of 30 last week for almost 400 yards. He was Conference USA Player of the Week. And actually, last year when he got a chance to do it in the bowl game, he had similar numbers as well. So I think this offense really hums with him behind center, looking to bet on WKU. Up here against Toledo, huge win last week. 41-17 in Starkville, Mississippi, over Mississippi State. Anytime you're a 10 and a half point dog, you go into SEC country and you win by 34 ATS points. The odds makers really off on that one. You're going to get kind of a little bit, well, you're going to get a lot of respect in the betting markets. And sure enough, we're now seeing a MAC team go on the road in back-to-back -back weeks and have to lay a number here, minus two and a hook. Hey, I think it's a little bit overreaction here, guys, particularly because that Mississippi State team is now 0-2 against FBS teams. Their head coach, Jeff Levy, you know, kind of the Lane Kiffin disciple, he hasn't gotten that offense rolling. Their offense really missing last year's quarterback, Will Rogers. And this Toledo defense, I mean, holding them to 17 points is uh, definitely tipping your cap there. But this is the same defense two weeks before or two weeks ago against UMass. They let up 23 first downs and almost 400 yards of offense. So I think there's huge questions to be had here. Now, back-to-back -back road games, hey, I don't think they should be laying this number, guys. Like the fundamental change here with WKU, it's the Hilltoppers at home. Home dog barking, WKU plus two and a half to lead us off. Four o'clock Eastern as well, simultaneous kicks here. Going against the grain, I think, in this one. A lot of people liking the Yukon Huskies. They're hosting the... Owls of FAU, 46 being the total, UConn minus one in the hook as the home favorite. Looking at FAU side first, week one, they go up to Big Ten country, go against Michigan State and have a single digit loss. They lost by six points there in East Lansing. Week two, they come back, get routed by Army. Army, a team that I think has improved this season, actually uh, wrote up a free play at wagertalk.com on Army minus five and a hook. And now they're laying over seven. I was going to break that game down, but don't want to give out the worst of the number. So I don't want to ding them too much for that loss against Army. They come back, beat an improved FIU team by three scores. This FAU team, I think, you know, making the travel is a question mark, but they're, it, you know, we got to throw out there their head coach. If you remember at Texas, Todd Herman, he's now the head coach of FAU, is 21 and six as an underdog. So he gets the guys going. They're catching points here. And UConn head coach Jim Mora, yeah, he's got the program heading in the right direction, but still UConn just 3-11 and against the spread at home as a single-digit favorite in this role. They really haven't performed that well. And guys, I know A plus B doesn't always equal C in college football, but I got to throw this out there. FAU went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michigan State in the close loss. Michigan State beat Maryland in Big Ten play. Maryland beat this UConn team 50-7. to Therefore, the talent disparity might be here. Sometimes we get that this time of year in college football. We're just top to bottom of the roster. You know, it is about X's and O's, but a lot more it's about Jimmy's and Joe's. I think we get the much better roster with FAU here, guys. I think it's wrong team favored. Jump on the Owls, plus one and a half over UConn. Got a night game for you in the Big 12 Conference. Kansas State and BYU, 49 and a hook or 50 being the total. Kansas State, minus six and a half, minus seven split lines sidewise. Two three and O teams going at it here, guys. Big 12 conference game. Kansas State, I, I, I like the under 
I'll throw out a couple reasons why here, guys. Kansas State, extra day of preparation. They played on Friday last week against Arizona. I think that helps their defense prepare here. And this is a Kansas State defense that held a pretty good Arizona offense to just one touchdown. The game fell under by more than three touchdowns in that one. So anytime that happens, I kind of look at like, man, where do the odds makers go off on this total? I, I, I think it, it happens this week, guys. I don't think this gets to 50 points. I mean, Kansas State is more than two seconds per snap slower than last year. You know, it, it, they do have a talented quarterback, but getting new in the system here. And you compare that with BYU, more than three seconds slower per snap than last year. And I know that doesn't sound much, but when you have 60 snaps a game, it does start to add up. So I think these teams are sitting on the ball more. Not I think, they really are. I mean, BYU, number 110. In terms of offensive pace, Kansas State's bottom half as well. So I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of offensive, you know, plays ran in this in this uh, in this matchup. Kansas State also their only game that that went over was down in the Big Easy against Tulane two weeks ago. And if you watch that game, I, I watched almost every play of that game. There was a lot of big plays on defense. First of all, defensive scores, but also defensive turnovers that set up kind of short offensive possessions for touchdowns. So I think that score is a little bit misleading, What it was like 34-27. There wasn't that much offense in that game. And BYU last week against a terrible Wyoming team. I mean, Craig Bowl isn't there in Laramie anymore. This BYU offense only had two offensive touchdowns until the last play of the third quarter. So going 45 minutes and only scoring two times, in the end zone against a, a, a really bad Cowboys team. I don't think there's too much offense at all, guys. I think this ends, you know, 17-13, 17-10, something like that. I don't think we get to 50 points, guys. So you can find a 50 out there. We're going under Kansas State and BYU. Got one game left. Let me know if you want to hear NFL. I know I asked it yesterday's show. A couple of you guys chiming in. Um, now that football start, my only request doing this was uh, not to do a video every single day. But now that we got... Uh, you, you know, during baseball, you have to wait for the lines coming out. But with football, you can get out the videos early. So it is possible, guys. Hey, if there's demand for it, I'll put it out there. Sunday NFL videos for Drew's Daily Diamond. And if you want to hear MLB over the weekend, let me know in the comments below. Got one game left for you. Also, check out Premium Picks. WagerTalk.com, Experts page, Drew Martin. Got uh, 5% up for Saturday, guys. Uh, a big one that we're not talking on the show. 3.30 Eastern to end it here. It's actually the first kickoff game we're going to talk. ACC matchup, Georgia Tech and Louisville. 57 and a hook being the total. Louisville minus 10 and a half. Actually, guys, it's minus 10 now. Don't want to give out a dead number across the board. So, uh, hey, jumping on the Georgia Tech rambling wreck, plus 10, catching double digits here. That is the play. I think uh, this Georgia Tech team, first off, they're way more tested. When you look at Louisville's strength, the schedule number 200. They've played Jacksonville State, which is down this year, and an FCS team in Austin P. So they've been dominant stat-wise, but really, who have they done it against? This is a big step up in class for Louisville. And Georgia Tech, we you, this, they're already playing their fifth straight game. You know, they went over to Ireland, beat Florida State. They went up to Syracuse, a competitive matchup there. They beat in Georgia State. Their quarterback, Haynes King, a guy I looked to bet on. Their head coach, Brent Key, done a great job recruiting there in the ATL, former assistant under Nick Saban, former offensive lineman himself, and they got a good OL um, going. So I think Georgia Tech is able to run the football. I think they're going to make some big plays behind their quarterback. I think they stay within 10. I think there's too many question marks out there with Louisville. So guys, to end the show, we're going to jump on another dog. That's three underdogs. Hopefully the dog's barking here in week four of college football. It's Georgia Tech plus 10 over Louisville. In recap, we got BYU, Kansas State, under 49 and a half, there is a 50 out there, guys. So under 50, Kansas State and BYU. FAU, the Owls, plus one and a half. In Western Kentucky, plus two and a half. That's going to do it for the Saturday show. As always, huge shout out to all you guys commenting below, smashing that like button. Really appreciate it, guys. I am Drew Martin checking out for this weekend. I'll be back on Monday, but let me know if you want the Sunday show as well in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets. Enjoy your weekend.